Salam alaikum, I apologize for that. I was just trying to type if someone could basically download this video and the last video for me. Um, can someone please download, yeah? Because this is very important. Yeah, I apologize for that. Yes, I apologize for that. I was just trying okay. to type if someone record this for this because a lot of this information is priceless and I want it to be a tool for other sisters, yeah? Because I get so many sisters that inbox me about domestic violence. And you know what? Like what you were saying, yeah? I don't know why, but there's a taboo subject that most sisters, yeah, in domestic violence, I'm talking about, because of my project, I've had sisters that I'm domestic violence where they're getting beaten up regularly, yeah? And they just think it's the Islamic stance that a woman, that it's impossible for a woman to get a divorce. And also they keep on saying a hadith, which I think is weak, that the most, um, the most disliked uh, halal to, uh, to Allah is divorce or something. Like, so most sisters that are getting beaten up, yeah, and there's a lot of sisters that are not physically getting beaten up, but they're verbally terrorised every day. And because a man has got a big stature and he's got a deep voice and stuff, and the way he orders her to do stuff, they're living in hell like, every day. But they believe that Islamic stance is that um, is that you can't, you can't get divorced. And if you do divorce, then Allah's going to be unhappy with you. So... Um, so, yeah, basically, what I was going to do, if there's any uh, brother or sister, please, can you download the last live and this live, please, and so forth, because I want to store this as a tool for sisters to realise how not to fall into these traps. But I apologise for um, cutting you off, sister. Can you please uh, start again from the sedation? Yeah, yeah it's so. fine. Um, I can't remember what I was saying, to be honest. Um, I don't so you said something about you was the reason why you went to the imams and stuff and so forth is because um, you went outside. No, I don't think no one else really went to imams and stuff to try and get a divorce. They just they just stayed in marriage. And then oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, so when the reason for well, the reason why I went to um, the imams to get my third talak was because when I was. Um, when I was early on pregnant, like in my early weeks. Um, I had a lot of bleeding and a lot of stomach cramp, so I went to A and E, and I would say on this occasion Adnan did look after my children for me, so I was able to go, I was able to go to the hospital and check myself out and whatnot, and find out if I was having um, a miscarriage as I had had one previously. So I went to hospital. I was admitted to hospital because they suspected that I was having a ectopic pregnancy. Um, alhamdulillah I didn't but during this time um, the next morning I the next morning I needed my keys but Adnan had my keys for my flat because he he was looking after my kids and he'd taken them to he'd taken them to school for me and I said to him that I need my keys as I'm unable to get in and my son was very unwell as well he had a temperature is very unwell in, in in school, but thankfully the school understood that I was unwell as well. They know I don't have family around me, so they took care of him, let him sleep in the office on two chairs, covered him up until I was able to collect him. Anyway, I was supposed to bring me my keys um, at 11 in the morning, Friday morning. Um, I messaged him Friday morning at about nine saying, please don't forget the keys. It was raining outside. I need to get into my flat. Adnan never brought me the keys. Um, he was too interested in giving um, a khutbah in a university or, or a lecture or something on that Friday. So whilst I was locked out of my house until five o'clock at night waiting for my neighbour to come home, he has a spare key. He's doing his thing. When I asked him, when he messaged me, I was really angry and he said to me that the Dawa comes first Sometimes. and that's the reason why he didn't bring me the key. Although I was very unwell, pregnant with his child and my son was sick, the Dawa came first. Now anyone who knows that giving Dawa doesn't come before your duties to your wife. Just like for me, if I want to give Dawa or help people, my family will always come first. But to him... The dawah comes first. Um, so, yeah, that's when I decided I no longer get to be with him. He then blocked me for um, a very long time. I can't remember how long. It was a long period of time. It must have been about two, three months, something like that. 
Um, our next time I saw Adnan was in December at the conference in Green Lane. I went up there with my eldest son. And, I heard about this argument. Yeah, yeah and two sisters. And um, I, I knew I was going to see Adnan because I knew he was going. And I saw Adnan on the, on the second to last day. It was the last night of the conference. And I called him over. Um, apparently, he said to his his wife that I got my son to call him out of the masjid. Wallahi, I did not have witnesses. I was walking in the street. I saw him. I called him over. I asked him what was going on, why he blocked me. Um, and, yeah, so then we spoke and was talking. Then he started raising his voice at me, saying that I've... Um, what's the word called? I've, I've dishonoured his reputation or something like that because... I travelled to Birmingham without a mahram, um, and he's getting aggressive. So I started crying in the street in Birmingham, just a little bit further than the Green Lane. Um, and he then, we then left. Um, we said goodbye, whatever. And he was like, oh, I love and I miss you. And we both went our own ways. I went with my friends back to the hotel. He went his way wherever he was going with the brothers. Um, he then called me the next day, shouting at me, cussing me, basically saying that brothers are saying, how is it that I'm in Birmingham with my son seeking knowledge, but he's not? So I've ruined his reputation once again. I also ruined his reputation because I went to imams to seek help to get a divorce. Now, I'm the only Muslim in my family. If I can't go to the imams... Who do I go to? Who do I talk to? People are saying to me that I shouldn't have gone to imams and I shouldn't have spoken up and done things. Now, I've done everything correctly. I have followed the Quran and the Sunnah to the best of my ability and understanding of what I have of it. Anybody who says I haven't is lying. Like, it was only, I believe it was during Ramadan, actually, a few weeks ago, that I last took myself to Brixton to speak to the imam. Um, why did they say you shouldn't speak to the imam? I don't understand. Why did they? Why was this people saying that you shouldn't speak to the imam if 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 you're unhappy with the marriage? I don't understand. Is, say that it? again, sorry. Why were they saying that you shouldn't speak to the imam if you want want to get a colour? Well, I don't understand. Because I'm spreading household secrets. That's rubbish. So for me speaking to someone to seek advice and help, I'm spreading household secrets. Now that doesn't make sense because. We know that oppression is bad and it's a bad thing to do in Islam. And if someone's being oppressed, you're supposed to help the oppressor and help the oppressed. But when people use this, people always use this year to their advantage to get away with their crimes or saying you're spreading household secrets and don't spread household secrets as it's not allowed and it's impermissible. If you're being, if you're being oppressed and you're being treated badly, you can speak to someone of knowledge Anybody who says any different is deluded, and I don't know, they're just deluded. This, this is a problem I was in, yeah. I have, I have a problem, like, a sister will contact me, yeah, and she will say to me, yeah, or well, a brother will be married and divorcing, married and divorcing, married and divorcing, yeah. And then what will happen is that I will bring this subject up, yeah, on my platforms, and then what brothers will say is that, oh, like, say it's a brother doing zina, yeah, yeah, okay. So the brothers, the brothers will say, or the audience will say, people will say, oh, but what's your proof? Okay, okay. But if the same claim keeps coming about the same person, because they're going to say, okay, but have you got proof? You need four witnesses and so forth. But the problem is, is if the same situation keeps on happening, yeah, with the same person from different people, from different areas and this, that, and the other, it can't just all be a conspiracy. And the problem is, is this, this, this that if brothers know that you need a little, they can just keep on abusing it and say, but what's your deal? For example, if a brother knows that domestic violence is wrong, yeah, so to punch up a sister and give her black eyes, he's not going to do that because he knows that a black eye is proof, yes, and she may go to someone. But he can shake her up, yeah. So what? Do, so for the brothers and the sisters who are always saying that where's your proof or where's your deal? Say there's a sister that's living with her husband, yeah, or there's a man that keeps marrying different women, yeah, and he doesn't physically punch them up and give them black eyes and stuff like that, but he shakes them up. Yeah, or he speaks to them in like a really angry voice all the time and make them live in fear and shout and uh, over 
like um, extends over them when you speak and so forth. What's there's no delay for that. But if this sister says it, and that sister says it, and that sister, and it, it comes to like a bunch of sisters. So what? I guarantee if it was your mum, yeah, yeah, if it was your mum, your mum came to you, yeah, you never saw it, but she said that she married her brother and he keeps shaking her up, yeah. Whether you had witnesses or not, yeah, you tell her to speak to her imam. You see what I'm saying? Because not if a brother knows that he can't, if he gives a woman black eyes and this, that, and the other, there's going to be signs. So he doesn't give her black eyes, but he, he wrestles her to the ground or he pushes her around and, is, and he makes sure he doesn't leave bruises. So what's that sister supposed to do? Because they're not four witnesses. She's just supposed to stay in that to life till she dies. That's, right. that's what I, I would know. What's their answer for that? Because when you have a platform and people come to you, you say, do you have any witnesses? Yeah. So the whole they use that they use that to cover to cover themselves up, and I remember even Adnan would say to me that I will never put my hands on a woman. I will never punch a woman, although he has because of he on his criminal record, he actually was arrested for beating up a woman, and he also threatened to throw acid on a sister as well. A um, Yeah, and the, I think the sister actually commented on your post. Wait a minute. This this yeah. this this violence thing because I know it's and then is like that because I remember one time, uh, I was feel, filming his revert story, and I asked and what happened is that my car got filled up so I asked him for a memory card, yeah, so what happened is that basically is he got me gave me the memory card and a few days later he just he phones me. In the morning, and he starts shouting, "Ah, oh, Aki, I got things to do. Where's my card?" I goes, "I don't. Like, what's going on?" And he goes, "He goes, oh, I need my card. I got to pick up my daughter." And just like, I said, "Yeah, I know, but we don't talk like this. Why are you shouting at me?" And I was like, "I was like, this, is this like this is strange? Like, he's just like mad on one." So he's, yeah, he's very aggressive. Yeah, he's aggressive. Even, but what, even with what, the the sister who is saying that she has a son with him that was born out of Zina. Um, she commented on your stuff as well. Um, yeah. I can, I actually believe that is his son. And the reason being why is because uh, child support would always call him up, asking him to pay money for a son. And I said, "Who? which one of your ex-wives has called child support on you? He said, oh, no, it's just a girl that's claiming she has a son for me. And I would say to him, why don't you do a DNA test? This is your son. Like, find out, like, if if he is your child or not. But the way how he talks to child support is very aggressive. He doesn't entertain it. If you look on Speaker's Corner as well, you will see that the way how yeah, he yeah, talks yeah. to Muslims is very rude and harsh. Yeah, like, like, yes, and it's there was one video and he was like, liar, liar, chanting at this woman, getting people around him. That is not how you give dawah. And I even advised him and I said, I don't think Speaker's Corner is for you because you get too angry. Stay away from it. But obviously... Yeah, I know that know. sister. I know that sister definitely hurt because what happened is when I was four years ago, and, and this is how I know that we must have been doing zero because I asked her and I got the comments and everything to prove it. She said that your son had just... Uh, you Sorry, she said that I've just given birth to your son yeah, and you haven't come to see me. And I was thinking, wait a minute, I've been doing dawah with you for the last four years, yeah? How is it possible that you had the son of this non-Muslim girl because you've been doing dawah non-stop for at least four years? So it's only like nine months, like 12 months. So so I was thinking, so, and what happened, how I know it's her, that definitely that he, that, that is his kid, is because she commented, I deleted her comment, yeah? When that picture came out of him in the club and stuff like that, she came back. She came back four years later and said, yeah, I commented four years later ago and I've been speaking to her currently. And she said, yeah, you deleted my comment four years ago. And I said, yeah, because this was the first time I swear and I made so many excuses for him. And she goes, she goes, yeah. And, and she even said, yeah, because of Adnan, she said that I was going to become Muslim because of him. Yeah. And I think she said, I became Muslim and I left Islam for him because if he could do that to me, how could he be following the truth? Yeah, she yeah. Said that in the comments. She, she said the same thing to me because I'm actually in contact with her, and I've said to her that if she wants, so she can try and get money from him, 
I'll be more than willing to do a sibling DNA with my child and her child to prove that he is the father. Because as I stated in my story, which other people um, shared, is that my main concern now isn't about seeking revenge on Adnan. It's not about the fact that he married a third and a fourth wife without me knowing and abandoning me when we was pregnant. My main concern is my son knowing his siblings. This because, is a case. This is, this is a case. I don't, exactly. And from every single one of his children's mothers I've spoken to, they've all said to me that he has at least three from Zina or two from Zina, two daughters. One is 13, one is 16. 13. Yeah, 13 and 16. The, um, the son that people are unsure about. And then he has three, four, four from Islam. And he has two on the way. Because I'm not the only one of his wives that are pregnant from what I've been told. Because um, once one woman mm -hmm. contacts me, I don't even think she's Muslim. And she said, I know of seven. She said, she contacted me, yeah, and I'm getting tons of these inboxes. And she goes to me, yeah. And Nana has seven, seven, yeah, baby mothers that I know of, yeah. And she started naming them name by name and decided to tell me deal stuff about each one. Of them. These are seven, and these are only the ones I know of. Mm -hmm. So she's saying that there's most probably a lot more out there, yeah, that she, that she doesn't uh, uh, know about. Also, there most likely is. There's most likely so many. And the reason why I say this, and people are going to be like, you shouldn't jump to conclusion this time ever, but what has Adnan done for my son? I'm about to give birth any day now. Any day now. I've received £80. Pound. £80. Pound. And if you read Surah Talak, it states that whether you're divorced or you're married, if you are pregnant and you have divorced your ex-husband, the man is still supposed to provide for you. Provide for me and give money for his son. And then pay me my allowance for breastfeeding his child. But he's not doing that. And then I see, what do I see? I get messages from one of his wives who isn't happy with me because I sent her picture, which I will admit, I sent a picture of her to my ex-co-wife saying, is this you? Because Adnan showed me a picture of this sister when he went to Morocco and he claimed that this is you, when it was um, it was his secret third wife, who he must have oh. been spending Fridays with. So she's not very happy because I sent the picture to the first wife of her, but from when Adnan showed me the picture in the first place and he's saying that this is his first wife, I need to verify if it's his first wife or not because the amount of lies that, like I said, Adnan is a compulsive liar. If I'm wrong for doing that, then Allah forgive me. But it's happened now. I can't take it back. I want to ask you something, though. If, uh, if, if and then has a DAO project called Hikma, Hikma Bookshop, yeah? Okay. He was told to delete it by um, a student of knowledge. But the whole thing is this, yeah? So why is it that you're all pregnant now, yeah? And he's divorced you. Like, like, did you, when you try to push it out of the marriage, did that not make it easier for you to make it hard for you? No, it's difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Some people... Yeah, but that's what I don't get if, okay, is that, why did he want to let you go? Me, if he's blocking me for so long and all of this type of stuff, why is he keeping me still? Why is he keeping me in the marriage? What and would this he say? Point, this was my point to him. And every time he would just say, you can't ask for Talak unjustly. If you ask for Talak unjustly, then you will not smell the fragrance of paradise. This is the ayah of the Qur'an he would use. I can't remember it word by word, but this is what he used to use against me. To try so, you and keep... you, so you would say you want to go for a and you would say no because you, can't, you shouldn't you you for the art for him. But did because you have a relationship? Unjustly. But did you have a relationship with him? During that time, no, I didn't have no communication with him. He would blocked me for at least nearly three months. On what? He blocked you on like, social media in general? Social media and calling him. I couldn't get through to him. For how long? Two to three months. And he wouldn't let you have a call either? He wouldn't give you 
No, he wouldn't. I, I can't afford a cooler. Like, the Sharia council charged, like, £400 for a cooler. I can't afford that. Yeah, I couldn't. So I then went out of my way to contact imams and students of knowledge to get my cooler. Um, I then started writing up my cooler. And eventually, my wakil put him under pressure. And that's how I got my talak. What would you say to your... When you told your wakil that you would have pull up um, and then said he wouldn't give, give, give you one... Um, what was the he reason? Said for he said I'm Majnoon. He would use my mental health. And he said the same thing. That don't make sense, though. If he doesn't want to divorce you because you're Majnoon. He said so that he I'm... Yeah. Because you're Majnoon. I have no idea. But he told many people that I'm Majnoon. And this is the reason why I'm lying. And I'm spreading rumours. But I have witnesses to many things that he said. I have so much to deal. Like I said, I haven't put anything up there apart from today. And the reason why I put things up there today is because I'm tired. I'm so fed up and tired of all this crap, like, honestly. Messaging, like, calling my social, uh, calling social services on me, calling my care coordinator, messaging my 10-year-old son, calling me a hoe. Mm. I have the message. I have put it up on my... Why did he say that? Movie. Why did he say, call you a hoe? Why did he call me a hoe? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe that's what he thinks of me. Maybe he thinks I'm not. How old is his son? He's 10. Damn. The same son who he called gay. And I even have messages where he says from that other account that you posted up, where he says, make sure your son doesn't turn uh, turn out to be gay. 10-year-old? A 10-year-old. That's cold, man. What I was going to say to you... Um, uh, you know that that account I made that video talking about basically um he, there was a, a account called Exposure Exposure to All and it had a picture of my yeah. my face was blacked out. That was a video where I was talking about and then marrying sisters and divorcing them. So if there's an echo, is that my phone or your phone? Yeah. It's my phone, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so basically, um yeah. So there was a account called Exposure for All, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it basically my face on a video where I was talking about Adnan. So I'm I'm sure it's Adnan. Well, in fact, I know it's Adnan. Yes. Yeah, it's but Adnan. basically, yeah. This video, um, this account, it basically threatened his sister and said to his sister, "We we know where you live. Yeah, mind you, don't get stabbed up. How can you prove? How can we prove that this is actually Adnan and not someone else who set up a fake I've proved, account? I've proved that it's Adnan." Because first of, all, first of all, because he works in EE, and you yeah. can see the board behind him. They're yeah. the EE colours and the EE poster, like the 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 the, the rotor, the work rotor. And secondly, everything that he commented on my post, because I have two Instagram accounts. Um, he or I have a personal one which I, I use for cooking, and he commented on it. And basically, with everything that he said basically don't lose your kid to social services all this type of stuff he's later on gone and called social services and i have messages from my midwife my mental health midwife and also my care coordinator stating that adnan has called them up so if that's not proof then i don't know what it is some people will see things in black and white in front of their eyes and they will still deny it they will still not believe it and that's I'm not them I'm, I'm nobody. Why is someone going to take the time out to make an account from me where inbox me and like use my face as a screenshot of a video I'm just talking about him? It's not like he's got a team and a crew and so forth. That's Adnan. And his new video, and he's got put the red through my eyes and so forth. That account was closed by police, I believe, yeah? Yeah, it was closed by police because it was reported to the police. I've been to the police four times now because of the harassment. It wasn't you, that it wasn't you, was it, Was that account you or another sister? It was another sister that he... It was my friend. Back. He messaged my friend, assuming it was another sister that he was actually going to marry. And I only became friends with this sister because he wanted to marry her and I spoke to her regarding Adnan and if she wanted to marry him. But he assumed that this sister was the other sister. Okay. Okay, and he threatened her, basically, to stab her up. Yeah, to stab her. Yeah. And he was, and making, basically, he was, he was going through my friends' list, messaging everyone. Basically, yeah, and, threats and... and I've seen the messages, two personal, where he calls her a white cow, and he calls her, where is it, 
I know yeah. you were tattoos, you got tattoos and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Too many presents. Okay, so um, what I would say is now, because um, how can we help future sisters? A lot of sisters, yeah, watch the brothers lives, yeah, and it's not just him. Like, a lot of sisters, they watch YouTube, but they see someone, you know, say, click color, 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 give reminders as well. And sometimes, like, like I say, rappers, they develop this kind of crush complex kind of thing, you know? Like, I'm sure, I feel sure we've all seen that meme of Adnan where he's in the bed covers and he's saying, oh, you got the hijab, you got the niqab, you're the best and this. And he's in bed covers, like, speak to girls and flirting. And the, but there's, I'm sure there's sisters on there wearing hijab and not wearing hijab and wearing niqab and stuff that actually carried on watching the land. Yeah. And uh, basically, like, they, they fall for this kind of student mm -hmm. of kind of flirting thing, yeah. And what happens is that they marry the brother and they find out that all these ayats and all this stuff are basically rubbish, yeah. How can we protect? Because what happens is that a lot of sisters, after they've got in, they get into these marriages. And, you know, this happens with domestic abuse uh, victims as well. The husband does something. Like, I don't understand why, but so many sisters, every sister that's come to me, like, Hamza have helped about three sisters get out of domestic violence um, marriages, yeah? But they've come, come to me, and they actually, the husband does something to make them think that I deserve getting beaten up. Yeah, and they like, like they always say to me, but maybe it's something I've done, or maybe it's the way I talk, reply to him, or maybe it's like something done like, why he's beating me. Like they actually believe that it's valid the reason why he's beating them, and they believe that like their destiny or it's in their cutter to stay in this this kind of thing. So how can we help sisters before um, they get sucked into this kind of like this this um, you know what I'm saying this um, daydreaming kind of love like, thing mm. with So do you know what it is like? statistically it's proven that if you've been in a domestic violent relationship before you're most likely to enter it again and if you're if you leave a domestic violent relationship whether that be mental or physical if you then enter another marriage or relationship you may be unaware that what is happening is wrong and this can even happen from like like men and women because it happens to men as well don't get twisted it can happen to men and women from a young age it can be the way how their parents have treated them so because of they've been treated like that if they then go into a domestic violent relationship they then believe that that's normal because that's all they know but all i can say to the sisters and the brothers because it does happen to brothers like i have a muslim mental health page i always have people message me um all I can say is do your checks. Honestly, do background checks. Do police checks because you are entitled to do that. Do the paedophile check because you can do that as well. Get as many references as you can and take your time. Like, that's all I can say. Speak to his ex-wives and speak to his current wives. Because if you don't, then you don't really, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And honestly, no one wants to be in the position where I'm in, where you're pregnant and you're by yourself, like, I didn't want to be in this situation, but alhamdulillah, I'm in a lot better position now than what I was when I was married. Like, I haven't relapsed once. Since I've left Adnan and I've had no communication with him, I haven't relapsed once. And all I ever asked for Adnan to do was to be there for his son and to do right by him. And I remember when we left, uh, the last conversation we had um, before I got my talak, I said to him, watch, when you give me the talak, you won't be there for your son. And he said, why? Why would I do that? Like, we was married. I said, okay, we will see. And what's he doing? Nothing. Instead, he's telling his wife stuff about me, saying I've uploaded pictures of them on social media when I haven't. I've admitted that I sent a picture of one of the wives to the other wife. Yes, I did that. But upload pictures on social media openly, I had to not do that. Did, did, did Adnan have any reservations of, of divorcing you while you were pregnant or changing his behaviour because he's going to divorce you and you're going to be pregnant and he's not going to be with you or something so like you both basically like just sort things out and because to me it would be like if I've got a sister pregnant yeah and I'm going to divorce her it's, it's like messed up why not just try and like I asked for mediation many times. When I first contacted the imam of um, Lewisham, 
I contacted him for um, to get mediation to try and resolve the situation because I didn't want to be a single mother to another child. Um, and when the imam called Adnan, Adnan said, oh, I'll sort it out, I'll sort it out. He didn't sort it out. He just called me up, shouting at me down the phone, telling me I've ruined his reputation, all this kind of nonsense. Um, so when you're dealing with a person like that, you just got to accept that there's no saving this. You either sit down and put up with the stuff that he's doing and accept it and accept that this is your life, or you decide you want better for yourself and to walk away and leave. And I decided I wanted to walk away and leave. What, sister, what can sisters that are in this situation at the moment and, and they got low self-esteem and they're just feeling that they that it's haram for them to get out of this marriage and they're just living a life of just depression and misery and treated like crap. And it might not even be physical, like, beating up abuse. Most of the cases I've come across, the people, most of the time, the, the hardest thing is not the physical get, being beaten up. And obviously a big, full-grown man beating up her sister who's maybe five foot um, tall or something or whatever and so forth. Obviously that is, like, disgusting and ugly and brutal, yeah? But it's... Most of the time, it's the verbal kind of like putting down and so forth. Yeah, like what? So what would the sisters now? She's she's listened to this or she's watching this, and she's basically in a marriage and she feels that if she divorces, Allah's gonna hate her and stuff. What would your advice be to her? Um, at the end of the day, you gotta do what's best for you, because you can remain in a marriage where you're being oppressed and you're being beaten or you're being mentally tortured, but. Every single time that this is happening to you, your iman is slowly decreasing. Anyone who says that they're in that type of marriage or relationship and that their iman is high, they're lying because you're constantly going to be depressed, constantly going to be upset. So yes, although divorce isn't liked to Allah, it's still halal. And you have every right to leave that kind of marriage. No one expects you to stay in that. And if a man expects you to stay in that, no, it's only because it's only to his own advantage. That's all I can really say. I've noticed something that Ananda's been married many, many, many times. I think he's been married at least in the last in the last two, three years, at least ten times, to between ten and twenty years. Yeah. I've noticed something. None of the sisters that he marries have brothers. One as far as I'm aware, one of them does have brothers. I know, but the vast majority don't have yeah, brothers. Yeah, the vast majority are a lot of Alam, I don't know. And I think that's not a coincidence because it, any sister, yeah, whether she's, well, obviously, if she's a sister, like, she may have brothers on road or not on road or this, that, and the other, and so forth, but you're not going to treat most, if a sister's got brothers, yeah, that are your age or, or men, yeah, you're not going to treat her how you're treating these sisters. He like, marries vulnerable sisters, sisters who are either new to the dean with no knowledge, or sisters who have, are single mums, or it's come to my attention, sisters who have mental health illnesses, so, As one of, one of his wives, the one that he brought over from a different country, halfway across the world, she had a mental health illness as well. Um, and also young sisters. He marries very young sisters as well. I don't think that he's married a sister that's around the same age as himself. Because he's 32, is he? Yeah, I think he's 32. Okay. 31, cool. Yeah, and I heard that she had to cheat to say that when he was, when he was, when you was pregnant and stuff and he was going to divorce you you like the one to luck thing he said he's gonna get another wife to take care of you yeah yeah he wanted to marry a sister from abroad to move her into my house and have her live on my from sofa. gambia yeah from from gambia yeah and to... that's the thing there's a thing there's a project that they do out in yeah he was involved in out in gambia and can you imagine this this is what i'm saying they had a marriage they had a marriage um uh what do you call it? A marriage organization or something, and they were he was flirting with the um, sisters from that and trying to marry them from that. So you sign up to this marriage thing, and the next thing, the brother that runs the thing is trying to marry you. And then they got this Gambia thing. They're helping orphans, yeah, yeah. Not like nothing to do. I'm not talking about it's nothing to do with roadside to Islam and spot and nothing like that. May Allah reward him and so forth. But I mean, Sorry. now you got you got someone who's doing charity over in Gambia. I like. And I'm not talking about Rashid or anything because I, I ain't heard like, a fraction of the I, best. I know, I, know, I, know what, I know what organization you're talking about because I used to volunteer myself and help them myself. Do they, and, is he the head of it? And then one of the heads of that organization? Adnan. No, the, the, the Orphans for Gambia. Is that Adnan's thing? No, 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 that's not Adnan's. 
Okay, cool. So what I was going to say is that, okay, so how did he know about his sister in Gambia? He went there? No, I think, because he, he knows quite a few people out there, isn't it? Okay, cool, 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 yeah. cool. But that's yeah, he... what he wanted to do. He wanted to move his sister from abroad um, and have her sleep on my sofa for her to look after me. And I even have the message so to prove that. I even have the message and then he called me a clown. And he said, oh, I gave you a solution. And I said, you think another wife's the answer to everything now? I'm so I'm all for polygyny. Don't get twisted. Like, I am pro-polygyny. I have no problem with it. Everybody knows that. But I'm not having any sister live on my sofa. Like, come on, love for yourself what you love for your brother and your sister, you know? Like, I'm I'm sorry, but to me, that's not right. That's not a wife. That's a maid. Yeah. Like, it, it, it didn't sit right with me, and I just thought, no. And and now that I sit there and I think of things, and I hear that he did actually marry a sister from abroad, and he then had her stay with him and his first wife, it made wait me a think... Minute. Oh, wait, after you were pregnant and he divorced you? Yeah. How long after did he marry her? I don't know. I think he married her. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't even know about her. I didn't even know about. I didn't even know about her, or the third wife until he got exposed. So wait. Since he divorced you, when did you divorce him? Um. End what, of December, early January. End of December, early January. I got my talak. So he got married twice since he divorced you in like a few months ago. Yeah. And you're pregnant? Yeah. The whole of what's in there. Yeah. Yeah. This is, that's my dream, man. Yeah. But the thing is, as well, that I didn't understand is that because he knows that I'm so pro polygyny and I have no problem with it, he still felt the need to keep it from me. Now, if you have a wife who has no issue with you marrying more than one woman, tell her. why would you feel the need to hide it from her? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't understand. Unless well, you to hide it. Yeah, I, I, I don't get that. And that's how you know that intentions weren't correct because he can't provide, fully provide for two wives. He can't do it. He not can't. for you, and not for the rent in London. Even if it's not for the rent, because legally in this country, if you, you only... Private, you only no, oh, private, yeah, private. If your council is different, but private, yeah, yeah he won't be able to afford it. Yeah. Yeah, but he. But you're he not going to get council place. So if you feel gay, you're not going to get council place. The only way you're going to get council place is if you're an immigrant or if you're a, a woman that's pregnant. Either that is private, and he's even, not. Even even then, then, it's still private now. Things the law has changed. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, how can people contact you? Because what I think, I think that basically, obviously, you should help because you've been through this and so forth. I think you should really try to help sisters that are in these marriages get out of it. So basically, obviously, people can follow you here on your um on your instagram and stuff but is there uh yeah um how can people reach you uh, on social medias and stuff if they basically need advice to i know you obviously you've got you've got kids and you're pregnant so your time's very limited and so forth but um is there any way that you give out advice so if anyone wants a bit of uplifting or a self-confident and stuff like that that they can follow maybe not directly contact you because you don't want your inbox to get full up but there was like nearly there are like 200 people in this chat and it's uh, late um, but uh, yeah how can people contact you and which social medias do you have um, well they can contact this one that I'm doing in Muslim Mental Health um, although okay. like I'm not like a proper qualified specialist yeah. I can only go by what I've been through and experienced but sometimes they they the people that can help you the most like I try my utmost best to post as many helplines and stuff online so that if people need help they can but the only thing i'm going to say is that after this live video i don't even want to discuss adnan anymore i'm tired i'm pretty sure adnan's going to retaliate post some things up about me know, he's, he's already done it and that's why i've decided to come out and speak if he didn't mention my name and say that i was his ex-wife then i would have kept my mouth shut yeah like, if he didn't make that video about me i would have done this i told you don't play bro yeah exactly and but after today like like I said, like I'm due to have a baby anytime soon. Yeah. And um I can't be bothered. Like if he's decided that he doesn't want to provide, and apparently he doesn't have to provide because I've Which exposed means? him. Where was... where that is I don't know. Where that in the Quran and the Sunnah. For someone who loves to talk about the Quran and the Sunnah so much, I'm yet to find that. Yet to find that. But if he's decided that he doesn't want to be involved in his child's life, no problem.
No problem. I'll leave it between you and Allah. It's, I'm not running you down for nothing. No problem. Uh, what I would say to the sisters as well, look, like, I know you, that when you watch YouTube and you see brothers that like, give lectures and so forth in the Dowsie, you think, oh, if I marry this brother, yeah, that he could wake me up for Fajr and he could read me a lecture before I go bread and this and the other and so forth. And I, I, look, I'm not going to say the majority of brothers in the Dawa scene are corrupt. I don't believe the majority. I don't believe half. I believe there's a there's a small amount of people in the Dawa that mess it up for a lot of brothers. But what I would say is that um, uh, there's no need. I don't know why you feel that you have to marry someone in the Dawa scene. One, bare chest sisters are chucking themselves at them anyway, yeah? Practicing and non-practicing, yeah? Um, two, you know, you know, must be married anyway. So, so like, let's get it. Look, sisters are chucking out their, their selves at people in Dow anyway. So, what's wrong with marrying a brother that's unknown, who's praying his five? You know, what I'm saying, doing the normal things is unknown. Like, you marry someone that's known. Yeah, there's a thing that comes with when some person's known and he does Dow and he does videos, and he does lectures here and there. Sisters from all over the country, all different like races and stuff, are chucking themselves because they want to be with him. Also, just because someone's an eloquent speaker doesn't mean they have lots of it bad. You know what I'm saying? Someone can be a very good motivator and this, that, and the other. Doesn't mean they've got a hench of and their neck and so forth. So I would say is that, look, um, the same way you have this love and this kind of like, ah, oh, look at him in, he's so good at Dao and convincing people when he rocks my heart, this, that. The same way another sister is. I uh, like, if you ain't down for polygamy and this, that, and the other, and bare sisters being with like, your husband, they're just... Marry some, what, what, like, what's wrong with marrying an unfamous brother? It's going to be more fit than feet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with marrying a brother who's not involved in Dawa. To be honest, just because someone is involved in Dawa or they're a student of knowledge, it doesn't mean that they're going to be a better husband to you because True. at the end of the day, they're still human. They're still going to have mistakes about them. They still may miss Fajr. They may not wake you up for Fajr. They may expect you to wake them up for Fajr. So to be honest, I wouldn't chase Dawa people. To be honest, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really chase any man or woman. If if it's supposed to happen, the best thing you can do, if you're looking for marriage, no problem. If you're going to do it online, like a marriage site or something, no problem. Look for the brother, find out the basics. If you're happy with him, then go straight to your wakil and then do everything else for your wakil. Don't do all this free mixing and all this type of stuff. I know there's probably people here now saying, oh, you're free mixing now and whatever. Well, obviously, I'm discussing the subject and whatnot is what it is if you want to think that. But, um, yeah, that's all I can say. But when it comes to marriage, remember that when you marry, you marry for the sake of Allah and in, with the intention of life. And with marriage come offspring. So you have to be reminded that the person that you marry is potentially going to be the mother or father of your child. So always go for character and also listen to the signs. Many of us have seen red flags when it comes to talking to people for marriage and whatnot. And... A lot of us ignore them, and honestly, if you pray that it's the car run, you get a sign, listen to it because it's not worth it at the end of the day. And I would just want to say that no one can accuse me of being a hater of men. I gain nothing from this. If anything, it makes me look messed up. I'll tell you why. No one knew about a nano hikmah bookshop or anything here, even now, if you look on the channel, they've got something like what 400 and something subscribers, this and the other. Like, I'm, I know I'm a nobody, I know who I am, yeah, but. No one can say I'm a hater from Atlanta. I saw him, I saw him doing good, and I promoted him like I promote myself. And I introduced him to a whole bunch of people. Yeah, a whole bunch. I don't know him mentioning them names, so some of the biggest style people out there, I put them onto him, and on my word, they took them on, and they started speaking all over the place and, and so forth. It makes no sense for me to see someone who no one knew about, push them out, push them out, push them out, being videos with them and this, that, and so forth, then just drag them down. For what? Mm. Look, you know, and there's some die hard hardcore sisters that would ride and die for and then like they're like fans and groupies and stuff like like they fell for the colour, colour of Sula and all this kind of like flirty stuff and stuff and they come at you and this that. What do I get out of bringing the uh, someone who I'd use my audience to put him in the spotlight and put him onto other people and this that and the other? If I was selfish in the first place, I would just sort of ignore him and just keep on promoting myself. So yeah. I gain nothing from this. Mm -hmm. I'm not. If anything, it's a headache for me. I've got other projects like I put a depression thing with a brother. Um, I talked about fathers need to, what is it, show their sons. Of it. I'm like, this is a headache for me. This is mm. long for me. So I, I, think do... the best thing, I think the best thing to do now is that Leave it. I, don't, I don't think Adnan's going to stop anytime soon. 
Um, obviously, a lot of stuff's gone out about Adnan now. A lot of stuff's been addressed. Uh, students of knowledge have spoken to him and advised him. He's chosen to go against what they've said and go against their agreement. It's up to him whether he chooses to fear Allah or not. But I think we've asked whether he's if he keeps posting stuff regarding yourself or whether it be that brother Aman or whether it be myself, because it's like us three seem to be like on his hit list. I think just ignore it, to be honest, because like you said, it is really tiring. And yeah. I just don't think it's worth it. Like, I feel like my intention, like even before I came online, I, like I made a dua and um, I, I made my intention before I came on here. And it was never to tarnish Adnan's name. Yeah. It was merely to make sisters aware of him because of what he's doing is incorrect. That was my intention. And to today, that's still my intention. So, And I would say this year, even with all this year, I would say this. Adnan, Adnan is a, can be a benefit. If Adnan sorted out this problem because he agreed with his student of knowledge, he was going to get professional help for this section addic uh, sexual addiction. Because I believe Adnan has two problems. He has one that's delusion of grandeur. Like, I don't know if he thinks he's the black Ibn Taimel or something because he went through Medina Book 3. But he should be teaching like books like Asulas Talatha and Kitab al This is not his level. No one from the Dean you know, uh, for, from none of the graduates in the masjid. No, this is not his level. Because you go from Medina Book 3 doesn't mean that you can't start teaching these books. Yeah? I think where, I think where it is is because he does have love for Islam. I'm not yeah. going to say that he doesn't. He does. Yeah. He does memorize Quran and he's yeah. very passionate That's about it. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah, he is. But if he wants to do this type of stuff and he wants to teach and he wants to do this stuff, then he needs to do it the correct way. You can't just sit amongst the scholars in Green Lane or follow them to Leicester or go to Brixton and then sit sit with them for two or three days yeah, and then yeah. say, I'm qualified now to I'm teach. No, you, you can't do that. If that's the case, then I'm a student of knowledge as well. But yeah. I'm not. I'm just a layman. Yeah. I'm just... just I'm just a normal person that strives and tries my hardest. And he admitted, in the meeting we had, he said, maybe I have a problem with women. He said, maybe I have a problem with marrying women. Maybe I have a problem with marrying me, women and so forth. Yeah? So the whole thing is, I believe that Adnan's a benefit, yeah? But he can be a benefit. But the problem is, is that I believe he has a fitna for women as well, yeah? And the thing is, a lot of men have a fitna for, for women and so forth, yeah? But when you mix that with giving down, then it becomes like a volcano because it's like, where is this that? Yes, he does memorise. And that's why I came out. I'm not afraid to meet the huck. He does memorise. He does study this, that, and the other. But if you're doing that, and you're also going to a nightclub, and you're doing zinner and this, that, and the other, and you're and so forth. And look, yeah. I, I know about all he did his few categories. Allah is all al Samer, the all hearing al Baser, the all seeing I can't make up a lie about Adnan and get away with it. There's no, like, I'm going to stand before Allah, yeah? Mm. But the whole thing is, is this, is that, yes, he does them things, and he he does, like, memorise big chunks of Quran and um, stack all through books and, and so forth and that. But the problem, is, the problem is, is that, and if he, if if this thing, addiction or this thing, yeah, was dealt with, yeah, because I said there's two, there's a sexual one, and there's one of thinking you're bigger than yourself. And then she stick to street that one. That's what he's good at. That's what that's his lane. Yeah, you know? yeah that's what he should do. Because he's and I used to say that to him as well. I used to say to him like, just stick to your youth work because you yeah. have experience in that. You're good with that. You can help the people. You don't need to be standing there and Hello, yeah. the book. But the thing is, is, so many people do this now. You know, so many people study amongst a couple of people for a week or so, and then they feel that they're qualified to teach and. It's it's not about that. You can't do that. And maybe it's because they feel passionate about it. But at the same time, it's very dangerous to do that because, like with Adnan, he slipped up and he he's he's done some very bad stuff. And that's why I don't regret that picture coming out because people can say whatever they want. Yeah, Adnan, yeah, would still be doing what he's doing and still be married and divorced and doing all. If this picture didn't come out, at least now. With that picture out and it going viral all around the world, cheap sisters have a choice. Yeah, there's still be there's still gonna be sisters that will marry him and this that, and the other. But as long as that sister's got social media, she could have a choice of knowing. Yeah, this other side. So like I don't regret it because students of knowledge spoke to him. His Tajwidi teacher spoke to him. Elders from the community spoke to him, and he did not give a damn and he did not stop. The only thing that made him stop. 
yeah, or made him like ninety percent of sisters be aware of who he is was that them pictures that came out. And when we said it to him privately, he didn't act humble when he didn't apologize and so forth. So look, I don't want anyone to be ruined. I hope that the brother that like, sorts out the issues and so forth. You know what I'm saying? When when he does what he does, he's a benefit. But at the moment, yeah, he he he's he's a cancer. He's a cancer, and sisters shouldn't listen to his lives. They shouldn't like support him and stuff like that because if You've heard the sister's story, and when you go in his life and you support him and you listen to him and you give him views of this, that, and the other, you're 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 adding to him taking another another sister. And I don't believe he's changed. He just divorced the sister; she was pregnant, and he's married two more sisters. That's not that's not solving. That's not solving. And and this thing is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a pattern. It's not something you just change in a day. You're scared that you're going to need help. It's like alcoholic people. You know what I'm saying? It takes it. T- it's a it's it's a it's a lifestyle that you that you have to change and so forth. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's up to you want to do so, whatever you want to do. But if you do so, you do so knowingly. And basically, um, I will leave it at that. Um, if there's anything you want to add, um, then say it. No, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, all I want to say is after today, I don't even want to speak about this anymore because I'm I'm so drained and tired of it. But alhamdulillah. I hope that obviously like people yeah, learn from the mistake that I have made and protect their iman and, and, and do what's best for them. That's all I can say. But anyway, I'm going to go because I'm very tired and inshallah, like may Allah reward you and forgive us if we've made any mistakes. So Thank you. Well, yeah. to to well, you. Brothers and sisters, please uh, download this year. Download and the second one so other people can watch this and can benefit from it inshallah I really uh, appreciate you for watching um, if anyone's downloaded it yeah both parts yeah, can you inbox it to me please like, I really really there's got to be someone out there that can download it for me because um, for me to download it and stuff I've got to download the app and something and I know there's got to be one of my what, someone who follows me who's a nerd when it comes to like downloading lives and stuff like that so please that's what I'll ask you someone out there Download this stuff for me, and I can upload it onto YouTube and uh, Facebook and everything else. Because these disappear after uh, one day. Anyway, Jazakallah Karen, um, everyone, and um, yeah, I'm gonna call it uh, call it a day, inshallah. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.